And we are live. Welcome, Mystery and Thriller fans. I'm your on-air host, Sarah DeVello, and I'm so excited to welcome to the show tonight New York Times best-selling author, Zach Bissonnette, here to give us the inside scoop in the special pre-launch event about his brand new book, Out Tomorrow, A Killing in Costumes. Zach, welcome to Mystery and Thriller Mavens. Tell us about this book. This is so exciting. This is my first event, so this, this is terrific. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the the book it's a, it's a funny story about actually how I, the, the best way to explain it is how I I buy weird things at auctions sometimes, and I bought in late 2019 a very very large portrait painting of Jessica Fletcher, Angela Lansbury as Jessica Fletcher in Murder Show. It was actually painted for an episode of the show by a by a studio artist, and I bought this and I got it home. And I hung it across from my bed, as one does. And I looked at it, and I had this idea that I wanted to do a cozy mystery series about two best friends who used to be married, who are now both gay, who opened their own Hollywood memorabilia store in Palm Springs and solve murders. And so, so that, and it was cool because, you know, I think like any cozy writer, I'm completely inspired by by murder. She wrote, I think that's sort of the the quintessential piece for, for that genre. But then the painting really inspired me to, to, to try to do this series. So that's, so the, so the, the book begins with, they've opened Hooray for Hollywood in Palm Springs and business is slow and they're trying to figure out whether it's going to work. And then a Hail Mary arrives in the form of Yana Tosh, who is a 90 year old former film star who has assembled a collection of costumes from the golden age of cinema and is looking to sell them. And she meets with them and then she meets with the vice president for a large auction house who also meets with Jay and Cindy, the main characters. And then the, their main competition for the deal ends up dead and they have to clear their names and win the consignment. And that was that sort of the, the premise for the book. Well, it is a premise that I love because I know I am a Murder, She Wrote fan. So I grew up watching that show. I was all about Jessica Fletcher. I was fascinated by the main accent. Um, yeah, she does like funny, a funny main accent. I think I think <laughs> if, if you talk to a real down easter, they're not they're not so sure about that accent, but it, it works for me. <laughs> I love it. And and I loved how Murder and Mayhem kind of followed Jessica um, wherever she went. And, and here was this woman of a certain age, kicking ass, taking names, solving crimes. What's not to love? Um, I So I grew up on this stuff. And so uh, I'm totally here for it. Any other Murder She Writes fans in the audience, give me a hands up. Tell us if, that you're here. Um, and I'm also loving that what I, what appealed to me about your book and why I've invited you on the show, aside from everything, is because um, this this premise about Golden Age Hollywood. So I am a huge Golden Age of Hollywood fan. Cary Grant was my first crush. They're, I've seen they're doing a new, they're movies. doing a Cary Grant biopic. I think that just got announced today. I did not know that. I'm That's very awesome. excited about that. Yeah, no, um, so we are broadcasting live to six different destinations, as we always are, across Facebook and YouTube. If you've been here before, you know the drill. If you're new, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Here's the drill every Monday for hashtag mur uh, Mystery Monday, because Mondays can be murder. I give you my handpicked features authors, and you get to ask them anything. So ask Zach about his Jessica Fletcher obsession, about this book, about the golden age of Hollywood, anything you've got weighing on your mind get them going in the comments i'll get them right over to him heather doyle harrison welcome to the conversation she said hi zach i messaged you about a cozy group for you to speak and visit at um a cozy group sounds fabulous zach get back to heather can you please email me at zbissonette at gmail i don't have facebook but I think like there's a stub account or something. So if you message me on there, I don't have access to it. I didn't see it. If you could please just email me at Z, my last name at Gmail, I will get back to you. I promise, Heather, I absolutely want to do your group. I just have not seen the email. So please, please email me and don't be mad at me. Yay. Well, Heather, thank you so much for tuning in and for raising your hand and joining the conversation. I feel like I'm on QVC, which is a, <laughs> life, a lifelong dream of mine, like all. I know. I feel like I should auction you off. Do I hear? Do I hear thirty dollars for Zach? Yeah. Thirty dollars, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's not QVC. I don't know. Anyway, um, Heather, thank you for joining I think the conversation. QVC would be more like this is a book that you'll you'll leave to your grave. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I got I mean, confused by the auction of the Jessica yeah. Fletcher life size portrait. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but we are here to connect readers and writers. So this is great that this is already happening. Um, and that uh, we have some cozy fans. Andrew, welcome to the conversation. He would like to know, Zach, did you do a lot of research or all basic knowledge for the book? Zach, I want to know about your research too, because I this love- is such a, This is such a great question. So- Yeah, I, tell us. I have this idea, because it's about the world of Hollywood memorabilia and the auction world, which I, I used to, back when I was a journalist, I wrote about antiques some, but not enough, but enough to be able to kind of fake it. And so I had this idea that, look, any mystery is going to consist mostly of an author sitting around Googling stuff and getting a lot of it wrong. Like that's kind of the nature of research in general. But I, I didn't want to do that too much. So I actually asked around and I, and I said, who's the best person for me to interview for this, for this book to try to understand the world? And everyone told me this guy, Joe Maddalena who runs the entertainment memorabilia department at Heritage Auctions. And so I emailed him and we set up a phone call and, um, and, the, and I told him a little about the premise of the book. And the first thing he said to me was, that is a totally plausible premise. The idea that there's some old lady in Palm Springs who has a collection that no one's seen in 50 years and she wants to sell it and there's competition, someone gets murdered. It's like, that could totally happen. These people are crazy. The collectors are in this category are very intense um because of the nostalgia aspect like, like people feel a connection to old movies and you know as as madalena told me you know that if you're a judy garland obsessive and you can have the ruby red slippers from the wizard of oz what more do you need in life really i mean you know and so that's why those sell for two million dollars i think the last time they sold <laughs> And there so, was something uh, about those red slippers. They got stolen for a museum and there was some crazy. So that, that happened. Well, what's so funny is, and this is, I think, where some of the potential for intrigue in movie memorabilia comes about, is um, there are a few different pairs of those ruby red slippers. And I think it was not entirely clear how many, because um, the, the thing that's so interesting about Hollywood memorabilia is at the time when they were making this stuff, it was not known that they were creating sort of the great American art form. This was seen as ephemeral. A lot of it was thrown out or given away or stuck in a storage lot at MGM. And then it was finally sold actually when MGM went through a restructuring, I think in the seventies. Um, but anyway, it's funny you ask about the research thing. If you're curious about that, um, I actually, my author's note at the end of A Killing in Costumes is my is a piece I did that's an interview with the Heritage Auctions memorabilia expert to kind of get the real story about Hollywood memorabilia, how it became a craze, what's hot, what's not, that kind of thing. So I think that's that's actually one of my favorite parts of the book. So. Oh, very cool. So that's in your in your author notes, the real story on Yeah, it's like a little, little type magazine type piece right at the back of the book. Kind of Ooh, fun. okay. So everybody check out. First of all, Andrew, thank you for the great question. Great question, by the way. I, so, I was hoping someone would ask. So. Okay, so you talked you talked to the expert, the Hollywood guy. Did you talk yeah. to anybody else? You know, just a lot of Googling and then other people in the industry who told me to talk to him, basically, but not you know, everyone was like, No, this is the guy. He actually he hosted a reality show about Hollywood memorabilia maybe 10 years ago. He's just a terrific super smart, super cool guy. The other thing that's really cool that came of that, that uh, I don't have this post yet, so breaking very minor news, not that anyone knows, but um, my painting of Jessica Fletcher, Heritage Auctions will be selling with all the proceeds going to the Actors Fund. So they're Ooh. taking no commission, I'm taking nothing. And so so that's so we're gonna be raising money for, um, I think that's the, the auctions in December. We thought it would be a nice Christmas thing. Um, oh, I love that. So it's very, and, it, and it's cool because it's a way to give back to sort of people in the Hollywood industry who have maybe fallen on hard times and that kind of thing. So more on that later. But that was one of the cool things that came research is I'm talking and I'm telling you about this painting, you know, and how I got into this. And, I, and then I had this idea, like, it would be cool to auction that because, you know, everyone's, everyone who comes over says to me, you know, <laughs> how do you sleep with Jessica Fletcher staring at you across the room? And I'm always like, how do you sleep without Jessica Fletcher staring at you across the room? But um, I'm well, How are you going to sleep without her staring at you, Zach? You know, a lot of therapy. I, you know, there's, <laughs> there's some separation anxiety, so we get ready to do that. But I, I'm, I, you know, it's time, it's time for, it's time for it to inspire someone else because I would not have written this book without that painting. So, you know, we'll, maybe it'll inspire someone else. Anyway. <laughs> 
Okay, well, I'm excited to share this breaking news. So Zach is auctioning off his Jessica Fletcher portrait for charity. So I always ask my guests to share at least one never before revealed secret. So here we go, the breaking news, uh, raising money for a good cause starting in December. So check that out. Um, I think Gerald, the listing's up. If you go to aj.com and type in Murder, She Wrote, it'll come out and you can look at it. You can't bid ooh. on it yet, but... But if you go, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Excellent. Jill joining us from YouTube says, thanks for sitting in front of the snow covered landscape. It is super. Oh my God, Jill Erickson. Here. This oh my, this is on one of my favorite people in the world. Yay. Um, she and was she the, it's the super thick she's rocking and, here in Cape Cod. So she's happy to see the snow. And she said, thank you for convincing me to watch Murder, She Wrote episodes. All right, give us the scoop. What's going on, you guys? Friends, the Murder, She Wrote buddies. She was the reference librarian when I was a child on Cape Cod. And then we became friends on Twitter. And she is so smart, so wonderful, such good book recommendations. And, you know, it's so funny because she has given, you know, because I follow her on Twitter. And she has so many smart, like, literate, like, books and movies and things for, like, smart people to read. And I'm like, you got to watch Murder, She Wrote. But she likes it. So that's exciting. First of all, shout out to librarians. Librarians Always. are the Always. best. Yes. And Jill, thank you for joining us and for your, your, the, for the for the for for commenting for joining the conversation. Zach, thanks for giving us the scoop um, on this. Uh, Jill as your librarian and and resource <laughs> resource guide here on Cape Cod. Loving this, y'all. The book is out tomorrow. So, Murder by the Book. Uh, John at Murder by the Book is a huge cozy fan. He has John's cozy corners at the store, um, and the book is out tomorrow. So, I'm popping the link to pre order now. So, no matter where you're watching from, here's the link. Click over, pre-order it, and the good folks at Murdered by the Book will send it out to you. Um, John mentioned that he was very happy to see your cat, Perry Como, making a, a cameo in the uh, social media assets. Let's hear about Perry Como. Is he your research partner? Is he your editor? Is he your inspiration? What's the deal? He's definitely my inspiration. Um, you know, the, the issue is that when your cat is Perry Como, one of the great singers of all time. It's very hard to have any kind of entertainment career that's ever going to compete with that, but he's been extremely supportive. Um, yeah. And he's, he's just wonderful. And um, yeah. <laughs> and what is Perry doing to be supportive in this moment, Zach? Um, I think he's buying a lot of copies. No, he, I mean, <laughs> you, you can't, you can't write mysteries without a cat, not, not traditional mysteries. I think you could okay. do it. Historical or thrillers, and by the way, it's International Cat Day. You know this, right? I just wait. Saw I did not know this. That's why I wore my. This is cat. This is the closest thing I had to a cat. It's actually for Caterpillar, the the the, the uh, ag equipment company, but it's close enough. And I uh, did not know this. No, so this is like International Cat Day is like a high holy day for cozy mystery fans. So it's pretty. Wow. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's a great honor to be a murder by the book. Honey. Excellent. Yes. Well, we're very happy to have you. And uh, we're not the only ones loving the book. So let's look at some of these amazing reviews. Publishers Weekly raving that this is a lively series launch. Bissonette's message of new beginnings after devastating losses inspires. Congratulations on that review from PW. Uh, Kirkus advises that fans of movie memorabilia will have, quote, a field day. Let's pop that up. Kirkus, who the New York Times called re reliably cantankerous and curmudgeonly loving this de this dose of a Zach. Um, congratulations on, on that. And Miranda James, New York Times and oh USA Today best-selling author of Cat in the Stacks and the Southern Ladies Mystery Series. Also had some wonderful words to say. Let's take a peek at that. Um, I'm going to pop this up right here. She says, Zach's contemporary twist on Agatha Christie's Tommy and Tuppence is sure to enthrall traditional, traditional mystery fans. At the core of this astonishing debut is love in various forms and especially our eternal love of and fascination for Hollywood and its glamour and glitz. Congratulations on all of these Brave reviews. So, Zach, you have written in other genres. This is your first cozy. What have you learned along the way? What what served you well as you switched genres? What did you have to change? I mean, you have to 
you know, I think writing fictions, because I, I did reported stuff, and this is my first novel. I've never tried. And, you know, it's fascinating because it's people like, it's like, which one's harder, which one's easier? And, it, it, and it's interesting because nonfiction's really hard because you can't make stuff up. And then fiction's really hard because you have to make everything up. So that's like, it's, it's so, it's so different. Um, I love, I love journalism, but I, I, it's funny when I was, when I was a journalist, I enjoyed the reporting much more than the writing. And then it kind of took fiction to get me to like writing. Um, with nonfiction, it's, 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 for me, it was so much about the story and, and the, and the information gathering and, and the reporting aspect of it. And much, much more about that for me than, than, than the writing, but with, with a mystery, it's so different, so different. I think it's completely different. <laughs> So obviously journalism, a, a tighter, smaller word count, uh, did journalism teach you to write tautly to teach you to write, to, to create a, you know, a tense, tight 500 word, you know, I hope so. Things? Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a great point. I, I hope so. And I, I think what, what journalism forces you to do is to, you have to write a lot hmm. and, you have to able, and you have to be able to churn stuff out. Hmm. You know, whereas I, I think if you're just starting out, trying to write fiction. And by the way, like I have no, you know, I know nothing about, you know, this is not advice or anything is what I'm saying. I'm just speaking. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think the, the discipline of, of being a journalist where you have to turn stuff out, whether you want to or not, whether you feel like it, whether you care about the topic, I think that that's useful to just get in the, in that discipline of, of just cranking out words. <laughs> I like this quote that you just said, nonfiction is hard because you can't make things up. Fiction is hard because you have to make everything up. I think that really gets to the truth of it um, because they are both challenging in different ways. F yeah, nonfiction yeah. constraining you with yeah. its truth. Fiction constraining you because you have you literally yeah. are starting from nothing. Yeah. Um, so this is fascinating stuff. Um I also wanted to share this review from Jen McKay. She is the New York Times bestselling author of mm -hmm. the Library Lovers Mystery Series. Again, our sharing our love of libraries. Sorry, Jen McKinley. And she said, hooray for the smashing new cozy mystery by Zach Bissnett, chock full of old Hollywood references, eclectic collectible information, and delightfully set in sunny Palm Springs. There is so much to love in this perfectly executed, high stakes puzzler of a mystery. Um, I can I we just I just have to say I mean tell me like Miranda James and Jen McKinley are just like I think they're my two favorite writers. Sorry, anyone else is watching, but um, I just know like you know in 2020 it was sad. I mean I was in New York. It was sad. It was awful, miserable on a multitude of levels. And their books really kept me from being sad all the time. And I think that there's there's nothing more important that you can do. And I think that's one of the reasons I. I wanted to write cozies is because I, I saw what those books did for me when I was, was sad, you know what I mean? And, um, and it's like, what could be cooler than, than to do that for someone? You know what I mean? So anyway, I just had to say that it was because since, since we're talking about Jen McKinley and Miranda James, I just had to say they are my two favorite writers. Oh, I love that. I'm glad that your two favorite writers um, reviewed and blurbed your book and sorry, had sorry, sorry. wonderful things to, um, to say and i and i think you're raising an important point which is that books have the power to connect us in a universal way across mm -hmm. geographic boundaries and you know wherever you are in the world we can connect through the pages and and relate to each other through this experience yeah. and to see them sharing how their your book has touched them is is really special um so i'm i'm loving this um oh. We have another comment here. I'm just, I accidentally scrolled past it. Jill said she was also delighted to have already read your mystery when you were still working on it, but she's looking forward to picking up her copy at her local bookstore, Eight Cousins, oh, tomorrow morning. Yay for shopping local. Thank you so much, Jill, for joining us here today. Um, we have 10 minutes left, so if anyone has any questions for Zach, get them going in the comments, um, and I will get them right over to him. Um, I do let people submit questions in advance in uh, in my Mystery and Thriller Mavens Facebook group, and some people did, so I also want to get over to there. So first of all, I just want to say, everyone, uh, it's free and open to all, so be sure to join. I'll pop the link in the comments. And then Zach... Um, it, let's get some, to some of these questions. Um, first up from Alice, she wants to know advice for aspiring writers. 
gosh, I mean, I, I'm I'm basically an aspiring writer. I just, <laughs> um, I think find the find the thing you love reading and write that, and don't 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 try to do something that's not. It's like for me, cozy mysteries are what I love the most, and that's that's what I wanted to try to write. I, I wish I had something smarter to say than that, but I just there are just infinite numbers of people more qualified to give advice on that. <laughs> what do you what resonates for you about cozies? What do you love about them? Uh I think you know it's that they're really about people and relationships and people coming together under tense situations and sort of um resolving situations through through empathy and love and community. And I think and I think that's really cool. And that, that's if I were to sum it up, that that's really what it is, what it is for me. There's other things too. I like the puzzle aspect to it, um, which when it's well done, I just it's just the coolest thing when, when someone's really managed to execute the red herrings and where it's not sort of a out, out of nowhere reveal. But but that that for me it's about that the people and communities coming together and doing difficult things. And um, and I think managing to have tension and suspense without which, which I think, I think people who don't like cozies would say they 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 don't have much tension, and I and I understand, I guess, the point that they don't have this constant ratcheting of stakes the way that the thriller does. But but to keep something engaging without sort of you know constant bullets flying and, and that kind of thing, I think is pretty cool. It's interesting because I've been seeing some. Uh, interesting conversations happening in the book reviewing bookstagram community where the questions are coming up. Are we getting too focused on the gotcha aspect of thrillers? Is it, has it become all about the twist and who can write the twistiest of the twisty pretzels? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, it, and is it becoming too focused on, you know, the art of the twist at the expense of maybe some other, you know, parts of the craft, which I think is a really interesting. interesting. Thing to to care to 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 start to explore. I like that you like the puzzle aspect of it, um, and and red and the concept of red herrings, which uh, you know is planting false clues for those who yeah. may not know. What do you? How did you execute the puzzle aspect of your book? How did you execute the red herrings? Did you? Are you a plotter? Are you a pantser? Did you go back and put them in? Did you think oh, I need more herrings, you know, less herrings? A plotter. So it's funny. I can't. It's hard to answer this without getting, getting too much away. But I actually started the book. The first idea I had was the twist about what the motive would be and how it would be executed. That's all I can say. But so I started with this very specific idea for what I hope is this sort of novel, clever, totally plausible, but never been done sort of different thing um but uh but yeah i i plot i mean i, I you know i used an outline that was a chapter by chapter outline but only like three pages i don't there are some people who do these like 70 page outlines and i, I can't imagine doing that just because it sounds like a lot of work but uh, <laughs> yes so when do you when so it's interesting to know who's a plotter and who's a pantser so when jeffrey deaver was on the show he shared that he is a vigorous plotter so he's been I saw that six to eight months plotting and his plot and his, his outlines run up to 180 pages, but then he's able to write very, very quickly because mm -hmm. it's all right there for him. He also writes in a completely dark room, um, tactile, which I think is fascinating. Um, yeah, I read somewhere, I think it was James Patterson who yeah. like started out writing this outline, a very detailed outline with really, really short scenes. And then basically realize why not just make that the book and cut all the other stuff. That sounds <laughs> powerful to me, but I, I don't sound interested. Yeah, it's it's so fascinating to hear different people's processes. Um, so are you so are are you working on your next book now, Zach? Or what what are you up to now? Yeah. What's next for you? Working on working on something. I don't it's bad luck to talk about it, but I don't I would hope to I would I would love to do another another book with these characters, but we'll have we'll have to see how this does. Um, but I'm excited about it. Either way, you know, if it's one book or 10, it was so much fun. It's the most fun thing I've ever done. Yay. Well, the book is out tomorrow, y'all. So here it is. Here's the pre-order link. And then I just want to share a few more reviews. Um, first up, this one from 
Um, Susan Elliott McNeil, the New York Times bestselling author of The Mother Daughter Trader Spy. And she said that, that your book is perfect for viewers of Turner Classic Films. A Killing in Costumes is an exuberant tale of movies, murder, revenge, and ultimately friendship. Um, I love the use of the word exuberant. <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's a great that, that's so fun because I think part of the challenge as a writer is is knowing that the that the story that you're telling it, it has to go through the, the the medium of the page so you have to make it as exuberant and exciting as you can in order to keep people wanting to turning turn those pages what do you think from a craft perspective gets that exuberance across how do you keep people turning the pages, Zach. Gosh, I, I just feel like such a fraud even trying to answer this because there's just, there's infinite numbers of people with, with more intelligent answers. I mean, I think I try to, the, the way I did it, I, I try to think of like, and I'm not saying I did this perfectly because may, maybe people feel it's too slow or too fast, but I try to it's like, think about what part I would be skimming if I were a reader. That's the thing I try, but I don't, you know, I'm not, but I'm not saying I did this successfully. I just, that, that's, that's how I tried to think of it. So I don't know, read it. Let me know if you think that that worked. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of, of, of you noticing um, which part you might be skimming um, on and, and then amp, and then what did you do with that information? Amp it up, cut it back. Usually. Um, yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, um, I mean, it reminds me of, there, there's a friend of mine, an, an editor, Eric Nelson. He's at uh, Harper Collins. He went, he tweeted, I thought it was such a brilliant tweet. He said, show me a book that a review says should have been cut by 30%. And I'll show you a book that the editor already cut by 30%, which I thought was so, so true. Um, anyway. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't that funny? Yeah, that was, that was his experience, I guess. So he's saying that they cut some but not enough yeah but anytime anytime readers say it's too long he's like just no we already cut it i don't know if that's, true. that's what he said i thought it was funny interesting interesting i love that yeah. uh terry gardner uh, the edgar award nominated author of the avery airs antique mystery series called this a cleverly crafted mystery with a pair of film buff sleuths this page turner again speaking to your ability to keep those pages turning is a delightful letter to hollywood stage and screen lovely words there from tracy right, right, right. gardner yay um and uh and again i just want to remind you all the book is out tomorrow i'm going to post two more amazing reviews this one from jane cleland she is the agatha award-winning author of the jane austen uh, Lost Letters series, and she says that your book is a delight to read, filled with wit and charm, irresistible characters, and fascinating details about the golden age of Hollywood. This twisty tale is a winner. Congratulations on that. And then I just wanted to briefly pop up Catherine uh, Shellman, author of the Lily Adler series, um, also weighing in with some wonderful words, saying that readers won't be able to resist Cindy and Jay, whose pitch perfect friendship is the heart of this playful, twisty plot. And then I think By the way, her new book is out tomorrow, too. The new book in the Lily Adler series. So she's oh. a spectacular writer. She has a new Jazz Age one, but the, 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 her Lily Adler books are like a, a Regency kind of Victorian thing. Beautiful writer. Anyway, everyone should get her book. But. <laughs> Yay. And I think it would be um, perfect to end on the Tom Sawyer, who is the Emmy-nominated Emmy head writer and showrunner of Murder, She Wrote, saying mystery readers, especially those with a taste for vintage Tinseltown movies, me, uh, <laughs> stars and glamour and the music of the era are going to love this beautifully affectionately written novel. It must have been extra meaningful to have those words from Murder, She Wrote. Oh show God, it's just the best show. It's, you know, anytime anyone mentions new shows, I'm like, I watch 10 minutes. I'm like, Murder, She Wrote's better. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. All right, y'all. Pre-order tonight and the good folks at Murder by the Book will ship this to you tomorrow. Zach, thank you so much for coming on to give us this the inside so scoop. And happy pub day tomorrow. Thank you so much. You're the best. This was a this was a lot of fun and a great honor. So. Yay. Yay. All right, everybody, stay tuned. I got Megan Golden live from Australia at the top of the hour. I'll see you then.